and government has procured 275 new ambulances to enhance operations of the country's emergency medical services. There's, however, some skepticism amongst health professionals about whether the inadequate ambulances syndrome will ever end due to poor maintenance. The Emergency Medicine Society of Ghana marks 10 years of their service this week to assess its impact over the period. Love FM's Chrissy Debra takes a peep into the daily activities of members focusing on achievements, challenges and the way forward. <laughs> In order to get to wear giddy giddy like that. It's almost time, you know. Hey, yeah, we're almost late. Good morning, National Ambulance Service. Ashanti Region, please. Morning, madam. Okay, auntie. My main job number, why? In this ABI, you're going to phone me, but you're going to call me. You're going to call me. You're going to call me. Why? 0245-12. Astral wound from Ash Control, over. Astra wound, proceed to Sofo line interchange. For an emergency involving a taxi and a bomber. With mouth and what is involved. Um, yeah, emergency VSC, out here, see Sofo line. Oh my uncle, I hear. Have they informed? Dr. Maxwell Osayambofo. I'm the head of the emergency medicine directorate at the Kompanoche Teaching Hospital. And I'm also the deputy coordinator for the National Ambulance Service in the Ashanti region. So the National Ambulance Service has been in operation since 2004, um, thanks to the presidential decree establishing it by President, uh, former President John Ajokum Kufo in 2004. It started uh, with seven ambulance stations, and under the leadership of Professor Ameza Karia, the current CEO, it has um, expanded to 133. Um, uh, stations in, in Ghana currently and it's still expanded. The challenge however has been sustainability of the service um, by way of ambulances and um, you know the ambulances uh, has to be maintained, the equipment has to be maintained and there should be a sustainability plan. If there's no sustainability plan it means that um, you could have thousand ambulances because they are working 24 hours every day they will wear down, they will tear down, the equipment will run down but there are no means of fixing it. How many patients are you handing over? We have two cases waiting because there are no deaths. Okay, what's the diagnosis for this one? We have red, orange, yellow, and green. And then blue. Blue means they are dead. Red means immediate state. Please, I'll be here first. RBS. For our fear. All right, guys, so we have an alcoholic who came in uh, hypoglycemic. RBS 1.3 1. What, what, 1. or 1.1. 1. Below 1.1. 1. In it. Sorry, he's up. Yeah, but we can't, we can't let him. Where's the, where's the Dr. Eric Smatiawa, um, one of the two chief residents in emergency medicine presently, um, right now in Konfanoche Teaching Hospital, which is the only training facility for emergency residents currently. Um, currently, there are less than about 40 emergency physicians in the country. It's actually a new specialty area and it's not as bad as the other specialties that we have. And we need to invest in more training because presently our numbers are few. We don't have uh, good emergency care services in the country. Everybody is running his own system that thinks is working for him. But we need people to actually spearhead these training. And unfortunately, we only have one training center in the country. Okay, so the rhythm on the monitor is ACES too. Let's continue down the algorithm. Down the algorithm. Compressions. Okay, the 16 gauge needle for him, bro. Let him do a quick needle decompression. That's contracting now. That's okay, so that means we have Ross. Okay, so for post cardiac arrest care, please just get ready to intubate the patient and his heart rate. My name is Dr. Nana Baduma Dr. Namua, and I'm an emergency medicine resident here at Kofanoche. We have a whole directorate for research and innovation. Um, other facilities are also doing other research projects. For instance, the research projects from my facility, we are currently investigating the effectiveness of CPR in our facility, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. We want to find out how active or how good we are at getting patients back and then also find out what causes most patients to go into our rest most of the time. Dr. Frida Menu Edu, 
I am a second year resident. At an accident scene, you see Ghanaians being Ghanaians, coming in, trying to help as much as possible. But in our efforts or in our struggle to get people out of cars and out of the accident areas, you realize that we don't know how to handle the accident victims properly. So somebody who possibly had a C-spine injury, a cervical spine injury, would just be held by the neck and pulled out of the car. And this person comes with a tetraparesis or a tetraplegia, which means that they will not be able to move any of the limbs or be able to walk ever again because they sustained a more severe injury than they initially had. As much as we are improving emergency services in Ghana, there's a need to also train the general public on how to manage emergencies, what to do in the setting of an acute injury, of a mass casualty event, or if you chance upon an accident, what you must do. What we propose as Emergency Medical Society of Ghana is that the National Health Insurance Authority should make sure that they reimburse the National Ambulance Service when they pick patients so that they can have money to be able to do some of these maintenance and then replacement of um, equipment in the ambulance. Because thanks to the current administration, they are bringing new ambulances. But I foresee that without these measures being put in place, um, for example, the insurance commission to take money you know, for accident victims, those money should be given to the National Ambulance Service and the emergency departments because without these sustainability plans, we will have over 300 ambulances this year, 2019. Um, in some few years to come, you will see that we will still be talking about the same problem because of the sustainability.